Live from KSAT 12, the news at 530 starts right now. We begin with another grass fire, them continuing to be a problem in Bear County. This afternoon on the east side, flames taking out hundreds of acres of land, including a family's barn. Our John Paul Barajas is live at their property right now. John Paul, how are things looking? Courtney, we're off 1604 in Shoeworth, and the land out here is torched. This tree behind me has actually still got smoke coming out of it, and we're told the fire started near Green Road, which is about three miles away from here, and it started spreading all the way down here, jumping the road, and eventually destroying that barn. Now, the property owner told us along with the barn, they lost 600 bales of hay and 10 to 15 acres of their land, which is fourth generation for Debbie Real and her family. She estimates the total cost and damages is somewhere between 40 to 50000 dollars. She adds it was heartbreaking watching the flame spread throughout her property as fire crews tried getting it under control, but is thankful they stopped it from damaging her home. Very happy that no human life was lost, no four-legged life was lost. Uh, still emotional. I look out my window and see a burnt field in front of my house and I burst into tears. Rial says with the hay that they, have, that they have left, they can only feed their livestock for about another week. Uh, luckily, her neighbors have offered to donate some hay to hold them over during these tough times, as well as a friend of theirs has made a post on social media asking for any additional help. On the east side, John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, John Paul. In other news, San Antonio police have three people detained after they supposedly tried stealing catalytic converters from CarMax. The incident happened around 345 this morning at the car lot on Fountainhead Drive. Police say overnight security told them the suspects were stealing converters from multiple vehicles. With the help of officers on the ground, SAPD's helicopter and canine units, the three suspects were detained. Their ages range from 17 to 20 years old and charges are still pending. Tonight, a family is mourning their loved one who died in a drive by shooting last weekend. It happened on Sunday around 3 a.m. on the city's northwest side. Our Lee Waldman is live. Lee, a vigil for the victim is starting very soon. It's starting very, very soon. If you actually look behind me, you can see friends and family, loved ones gathered with heart-shaped balloons, all to honor 28-year-old Quinton Smith, who was killed one week ago. Now, according to San Antonio Police Department, Smith was leaving a hookah lounge on West Avenue near Edgebrook Lane last Sunday around 3 a.m. He was walking to his car when a light-colored vehicle drove by on West Avenue and someone inside started shooting. Police tell us Smith was shot in the leg twice by gunfire. The lounge is security called police. EMS took Smith to University Hospital where he later died. Now Smith's mom tells us that her son was a dedicated father who was going to be dearly missed. He has four young children and tonight at 10 o'clock you'll be hearing from his family and his loved ones. We'll show you what's happening with this vigil and we'll also update you on San Antonio Police Department's investigation. Live on the east side, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Lee. The FBI releasing the identity now of the suspect who took a rabbi and three others hostage at a North Texas synagogue yesterday. As ABC's Maria Villarreal reports, the standoff lasting for hours came to an end with the suspect dead and the hostages safely rescued. The tense, nearly 12-hour-long standoff at a North Texas synagogue coming to an end late Saturday. The FBI called out uh, the hostage rescue team, which is an elite uh, hostage rescue force out of Quantico, Virginia. President Biden calling it an act of terror. We have this capacity to deal with assaults on particularly the anti-Semitism that has grown up. They should rest assured that we are focused. We are focused, the Attorney General is focused on making sure that we deal with these kinds of acts. The situation unfolded Saturday morning at Congregation Beth Israel when the suspect interrupted a scheduled Shabbat service, taking Rabbi Charlie Citron Walker and three others hostage. It's very likely this situation would have ended very badly early on in the day had we not had professional, consistent negotiation with the subject. Law enforcement officials telling ABC News the suspect claimed he had explosives in his backpack and was demanding the release of convicted terrorist Afia Siddiqui, who was sentenced to 86 years in federal prison for attempted murder of a U.S. soldier. Police confirming the suspect, identified as British citizen Malik Faisal Akram, is dead after what they called a shooting incident when the FBI hostage rescue team breached the synagogue. All four of the hostages safely rescued. I've seen these not end this well 
And anytime you have an, an Islamic type extremist or someone who sort of purports to be that supposedly, that they can end really badly, as we well know. Investigators are now working to determine if there's any connection between the hostage taker and Siddiqui. The British Counterterrorism Police confirm they are working with U.S. authorities in the investigation. Mireya Villarreal, ABC News, Colleyville, Texas. Following the hostage situation, President Joe Biden called the incident an act of terror that will not be tolerated. He then turned focus to guns and background checks. The idea of background checks are critical, but you can't stop something like this if someone is on the street buying something from somebody else on the street, except that there's, too, there's so many guns that have been sold of late, it's just ridiculous. The president went on to say there has been a failure to focus and remain consistent on gun purchases and sales. Back here at home, don't be alarmed if you hear or have already heard explosions coming from the south side. The San Antonio Police Department's bomb squad is doing training exercises. The department says detonations may be heard near the training academy located off Southwest Loop 410 near Pleasanton Road. The good thing is it'll only last until 6 p.m. Well, the San Antonio Zoo is honoring the late Betty White with Thank You for Being a Friend Day. The zoo says admission is free for everyone over the age of 65 and members can bring a friend for free. Standard admission will be reduced to only $8. The special is tomorrow only from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Betty White, who recently passed away before her 100th birthday, was long known for her acting career and tireless work in animal welfare, conservation efforts, and advocacy for zoos across the country. Still ahead on your news at 530, severe weather sweeps across the southeast. We're taking a look at the damage left behind and what comes next for many homeowners. Plus, could a man's life been, have been saved? We're telling you why passengers are now upset with Amtrak after a man is shot and killed on board. Happening around America, a 30-year-old man shot to death on an Amtrak train pulling into Lee's Summit for Saint, from St. Louis on Friday night. A witness reportedly told Amtrak authorities he saw the shooter get off the train, asking them to call police because someone had been shot. But the train did not stop until it got to Independence, which took about 40 minutes. It's unknown why the train didn't stop, and police are, police are investigating, but saying that there were about 10 people riding in the same car when that shooting happened. The suspect is still on the run. Now to Florida, where hundreds of people are now homeless and thousands more are without power after an EF2 tornado. The National Weather Service confirming the 118 mile per hour tornado hit near Punta Rasa this morning. Authorities say 30 homes were destroyed and another 108 were damaged. Three people were reported injured, but thankfully none of them were said to be life-threatening injuries. For the time being, an emergency shelter has opened for the estimated 150 to 200 people displaced by the storm. And severe weather continued across the southeast, but this time with snow and ice. Check this out. A winter storm took down several trees and power lines in Georgia, leaving thousands of homeowners with a big mess trying to stay warm. In North Carolina, at least 25 counties have declared a state of emergency. More than 80 million people are affected. The storm dropped freezing rain, ice and snow on many cities and states that don't normally face such cold weather challenges. And Katie, we know that very well. I, here. I was going to say yeah. we can probably get, pass some sympathy on to those folks uh, after what we dealt with last February. It is not fun at all. Big messy storm system moving into the mid Atlantic and Northeast tonight. I'll show you what that looks like on radar coming up here very shortly. Meanwhile, here at home, a beautiful day started off chilly, but we warmed up nicely this afternoon uh, and we'll see more of that tomorrow for uh, for the holiday on Monday. We'll talk about your Monday forecast coming up. The aquifer, no change in the past 24 hours and then your pollen count, some improvement. If you'll remember yesterday, Mountain Cedar was over 23,000. It's down to around 3,000 today. So baby steps, small improvement, mold or moderate with a count of 670. We'll be right back. Well, I know the cedar is lower and at least the wind is gone. So let's be positive here. Yeah, I think there are still, it may just be me, I think there are some lingering effects from the cedar and all the wind yesterday. 100%. I mean, I was talking to one of our producers here. It's not just the allergens that get picked up in wind like that. It's dust and who knows what else. All of it. So 
Maybe a little funky fied today, but at least the winds are a little lighter. Let's start with the messy weather that's way far away from Texas. Big winter storm churning across parts of the mid Atlantic now into the northeast. There is some uh, heavy snow falling there. Uh, the transition from rain to ice looks like that is happening across parts of Virginia and Maryland, even New Jersey. Uh, so it's going to be a mess for those folks there. But meanwhile, across Texas, uh, aside from some high thin clouds, things are nice and quiet today. Started off cold this morning. Our average low this time of year is 41. We got as cold as 31 at the airport. So a widespread light freeze for a lot of us, even a hard freeze uh, briefly for parts of the hill country early this morning. But look how we rebounded today up to 65 at the airport. Pleasanton looks like we're still waiting on your official high. You did get warmer than 42 this afternoon up to 68 in Kerrville, 70 for the high temperature today in Carrizo Springs and Catula. So the big swing in temperatures from morning to afternoon. You can think a couple of things. The sunshine, also lighter winds and very dry air. Our dew points are low, low, low in the teens and in some cases even the single digits. So that air is bone dry. And when we've got such dry air, it's really easy for our temperatures to bottom out in the morning and then maximize in the afternoon. So holding on to really dry air tomorrow, we'll see a very similar swing in our temperatures for Monday. So currently a lot of us are still in the 60s, 73 in Del Rio. Right now it is 70 in Catula. Currently overnight we'll see another big drop in our temperature. So another freeze expected for some of the area, not everyone. I think especially along and north of Highway 90, you can expect a light freeze overnight. Shouldn't be quite as cold tomorrow morning. Morning, so we won't have as many folks at freezing to start the day tomorrow, but generally a light freeze expected along and north of Highway 90 around San Antonio. 32 Von Ormy, 30 Leon Springs for your morning low, 32 in Castroville. But again, as we get into tomorrow afternoon, a uh, big swing in our temperatures will be a few degrees warmer tomorrow afternoon than we were today. So we'll call it low 70s across much of the area for your Monday. It's going to be another really pleasant day tomorrow with plenty of sunshine. Look at this through Monday afternoon. Uh, really nothing to see here. Just a whole lot of sunshine and really comfortable tomorrow. Very similar story into Tuesday. We'll start to see humidity try to climb back into Tuesday, but it really won't be too noticeable. And then our next more noticeable set of weather changes will come on Wednesday. You'll notice some more clouds around and our next front coming through late in the day Wednesday. Unfortunately, this this will be yet another dry cold front for us, meaning we won't get any rain out of it. There will be some rain off to the east there, but it doesn't look like this will help us out with rain at all. In fact, over the next seven days, and it brings me no joy to share this with you over the next seven days, here's our rainfall outlook and the best I can do down a little bit closer to the Gulf of Mexico, anywhere between a quarter and a half inch of rain, and that is being very, very generous. Um, so unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to get much help in the rainfall department over the next week, but at least we can get you a nice day tomorrow. If you'll be out for a good part of the day, dress in layers because it will be another cold start, but we'll jump into the low 70s by the afternoon. Plenty of sunshine tomorrow and into Tuesday. I've sprinkled some very low end rain chances in for the back half of the work week into the start of next weekend, but coverage of any rain at this time does look like it's going to be pretty low. We'll keep an eye on that for you. And also of note, behind that midweek cold front, it does look like it will be a bit more chilly again, second half of the work week. Courtney. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. And you're joining the ladies in red tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're talking about white, though. Derek White returned to the Spurs, and it's good. I guess I'm feeling patriotic because I'm wearing blue today, too. But Derek White did return to the Spurs last night. He played some big minutes and actually scored a team high 19 points. When we come back, we'll hear from him on his performance. Plus, the defending champs are moving on in the NFL playoffs. We'll hear from Tom Brady after his big victory over the Eagles next. Just a waiting game. I'm hoping your test comes back right so you can get out of protocols and um, come back and help the team. Well, Derek White's return was worth the wait. With him back in the lineup, the Spurs picked up a huge win last night against the Clippers in Big Board Sports.
The Spurs snapped their five-game skid last night with a resilient 101-94 victory over the Clippers. San Antonio led for the majority of the game and did lose the lead early in the fourth quarter, but DeJounte Murray helped rally the troops with a pair of huge buckets to close out the win. DeJounte finished with 18 points, 9 assists, and 7 rebounds. Those are numbers we tend to expect from him these days. But in his first game back from COVID-19 health and safety protocols, Derek White stole the show. White played 25 minutes off the bench and scored a team-high 19 points to go with four boards four assists and three blocks after being inactive for 10 days did white know he'd come back and contribute in such a big way i mean you never really know um i mean you hope you, you come back and you play well but you never really know so um i was just gonna let the game tell me what to do and i uh, trying to force nothing and i kind of got hot early and just try to roll with it derek does a great job of, of of you know taking over in a situation where we need him to where dj might be a little bit tired and you know sometimes he needs a, a possession just to kick the feet up so um yeah i think derek's a, a massive piece of the puzzle for us and and that showed again tonight you know he came back and it looked like he, he didn't didn't miss a step so um you know massive part of our, our program and, and what we're trying to do so they've won one game. Now the Spurs have to turn that into a winning streak for just the third time this year. It won't be easy considering their upcoming schedule. So what do the Spurs need to keep their fire need to do to keep their offense firing on all cylinders? I mean, just games, honestly, just us playing, you know, um, it's been tough. You know, a couple of people loud and here, COVID and injuries and this and that. So, I mean, I think it was great even today having most most people back and kind of getting back to a normal lineup, you know, so. You know, Derek coming back, Dub being back, me, KJ, and, you know, just having a bunch of us back is huge. Spurs host the Suns Monday night at 7.30 p.m. Phoenix owns the Western Conference's best record at 33-9. The Suns just dispatched their latest victim this afternoon, the Detroit Pistons, on the road. Phoenix scored 39 points in the first and third quarters en route to a dominant 135-108 victory. Devin Booker led the way with a game-high 30 points, and six Suns finished in double figures. Tough news today, Nets forward Kevin Durant has been diagnosed with a sprained MCL in his left knee. Happened last night in the second quarter against the Pelicans when Bruce Brown fell fell into Durant's knee and he came up limping. The Nets expect his recovery to take four to six weeks. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. For the eighth time in NFL history, the Dallas Cowboys are going head to head with the San Francisco 49ers in the playoffs, but this will be the first time these two franchises meet in the opening round. Dallas owns the all time playoff record against San Fran five to two and Dak Prescott is looking for his second playoff win and his third appearance in the divisional round. The game is currently in progress as we speak. Not looking good so far. Cowboys trail 23 to 7 in the third quarter. Larry Ramirez is in Dallas right now and we'll have highlights and reaction from this game tonight on instant replay. The early afternoon wildcard matchup between the Eagles and Buccaneers determines the Cowboys fate if they do end up rallying and advancing to next weekend's divisional round. Didn't take long for the two seed to flex their might. Opening drive. Giovanni Bernard caps a 12 play 75 yard drive with a two yard touchdown run. It's seven nothing bucks just five minutes into the game. They led 14 to nothing after one and 17 nothing at halftime. So we head to the third quarter and Tom Brady adds to the lead finding a wide open Rob Gronkowski for a two yard score. That makes it 24 nothing Tampa and Brady wasn't done on the next possession. He hits Mike Evans deep downfield. Evans avoids a tackle and somersaults in for the 36 yard score. Eagles score twice in the final quarter, but the difference was just cosmetic. Buccaneers take care of business 31 to 15. You know, just trying to figure out a way to move the ball down the field and score some points. I thought we did a good job in a couple of those areas. Um, we ran the ball really well. Um, line played great. Receivers played great. Tight ends played great. So used a lot of different people and um, everyone got in there, made some plays to help the team win. Defense played great. Special teams was amazing. So we're going to need it again next week. It only gets tougher from here. So if Dallas does rally to win, they are heading to Raymond James Stadium in Tampa for a rematch of their week one loss. In frigid temperatures, the Buffalo Bills demolished the New England Patriots in the AFC's wild card round last night, 47-17. Buffalo scored touchdowns on each of their first four possessions and led 27-3 at halftime. Quarterback Josh Allen was on cruise control. He completed 21 of 25 passes for 308 yards and five touchdowns. This opening round might have been easy, but Allen knows the team has to make the most of their chances moving forward. Things can be different. It's, it's an opportunity right in front of us right now. So um, we're going to need everybody going forward, guys pulling in one, one direction. And we, obviously, we don't know who we play next week. But uh, whoever it is, we got to put together a good, a good game plan and have a really good week of preparation and go out there and try to execute again.
Lastly, world number one tennis player Novak Djokovic is officially out of the Australian Open. Djokovic's visa was canceled by Australia's immigration minister on January 6th due to the fact that he is not vaccinated and his resulting appeal has been denied. He was deported today and the decision was unanimous. So marks the second time he's lost on a major in straight sets this year. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Yep. We'll be right back. Stay with us. That is all the time we have for right now. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you back here tonight on the Night Beat at 10 o'clock. Have a great evening.